Hello and welcome to AHS Countdown. I'm your host, Max Besman. I'm joined by co-host Taylor Gottney and Reese Kinder. And today we got a huge matchup as the playoffs are upon us between the number two seed out of Region 1, the Baker Hornets, and the number three seed out of Region 2, the Auburn Tigers. This is the third ever time that these two teams have played. And Auburn currently leads the series 2-0 coming into this game. The last time these two teams met was in 2021 for the first round of the playoffs in a game where Auburn came out victorious 39-3 at home and with all of that being said let's start off with the Baker Hornets they finished the regular season at 8-2 and two overall as well as 5-1 and one in Region 1 play the Hornets are coming off of a big win last week against Mountain Brook on the road by a score of 37-28 to 28. the Hornets only two losses of the season have come against Dothan and Mary Montgomery who will actually face tonight as well and both of these teams finished in the top four at the end of the regular season all that being said what are some things that this Baker team will need to do to secure the win tonight I mean, yeah, Max, on the offensive side, I mean, it, very, very good. They've scored 340 points so far this season. Jeez. And have six games where they scored more than 30 points. They also have an amazing guy leading the offense in Josh Flowers. Yeah, we talked a three-star about recruit committed to Mississippi State who has 19 touchdowns and almost 2,000 yards. And get this, too. He has 1,310 yards and 13 touchdowns rushing. Jeez. So he's Lamar Jackson, but a little bit younger. <laughs> But he'll try to keep going and use his dual threat against the defense. And then the guy that all Auburn University fans mm -hmm. should be excited about, <coughs> number five, Bryce Kane, who was highly recruited as a four-star, committed to play for the university right down the road. He has 15 touchdowns and will be looking to continue to torch the Tigers on deep balls. This is a very pass-heavy Baker team that we'll see. And if our secondary doesn't play good, I mean, these receivers could have a field day. But keep an eye out for number eight and number five on the offense. Baker defensively, they have 352 solo tackles, 285 assisted tackles, and they have 10 sacks this whole season. And they only get one sack per game. That's not a lot. You got to get a lot of sacks um, in the game. Auburn has a plenty of sacks. And then they don't force a lot of turnovers. Uh, only three picks on the season and one fumble recovery. So really, Baker, you know, just needs to step it up tonight for, for them to uh, get a win against the Tigers, you know? Yeah, I like what you said there, Reese. I mean, you know, not a lot of sacks per game. I mean, they're going to need that, especially yeah. against a really tough Auburn team, an Auburn offense that's really clicking recently. You know, and speaking of which, let's go ahead and start off talking about the Tigers. Coming off of a blowout win over the Smith Station Panthers on the road, I mean, Auburn finished the regular season at 8-2 and two overall and 6-2 and two in the region, like I said, after that easy win last week on the road against Smith Station by a score of 49-8. to eight. Considering this Auburn team is only an eight-point favorite, though, coming into this game according to AHSFHS.org, it's safe to say that Auburn will have their hands full on the road tonight against the Hornets. With all that being said, how do the Auburn Tigers get it done tonight against Baker? I mean, again, this Auburn offense has been improving all season long, and it showed against Smith Station. I mean, 49 points in a region game is always great to have. Great momentum booster going into the playoffs. Jackson Kilgore, finally 100%. Went 14 for 19 with 130 yards and a touchdown. Didn't throw the ball a lot. But number 29, Omar Mabson, mm -hmm. had four rushing touchdowns Jeez. on six carries. <laughs> that means he carried the ball six times, and two That's out of those wild. six times he didn't score. There was fantasy but, for high school football. Yeah, pick Omar, Omar is a problem for any defense and will continue his dominance. And then a guy that we talked about a lot last year, but not as much this year, is Ian Nation. Mm -hmm. He also had a great game with 53 receiving yards and, you know, a more run-heavy game for the Tigers. And he was a top target. He's a top target for Kilgore and Allen. But overall, this offense has scored 338 points in the regular season. We'll be looking to continue the last two games of 48-plus points on the scoreboard. This Baker defense will really have their hands full tonight with this clicking Auburn offense. Yeah, Auburn defensively, you know, they've done great on the road and uh, they've just done great overall all season. They're very dominant. They have uh, 325 solo tackles. They have 15 sacks during the whole season. That's five more than Baker. And then they've forced a good amount of turnovers with six picks and five fumble, recover five fumble recoveries. <laughs> So I'm hoping tonight Auburn's defense can keep it up against the Hornets. Yeah, I mean, like y'all said, Auburn Auburn as a team, really, since that loss to Central has really been clicking. I mean, these last two games, they've been allowed eight total points and they while scoring also 97 points in two games. I mean, you know, Auburn offensively, defensively have been playing really good, really putting it together at the right time of the season coming into this game against Baker. And now that we're in the playoffs, it's winner go home for every team from here on out. The winner of this game will move on to the second round to play the winner 
of Central versus Davidson. And if Central wins, the winner of this game will have to travel to Phoenix City. But if Davidson gets the upset, the winner of our game will host Davidson in the second round. That being said, what are some things that the Tigers need to improve on in order to come out of this game with a W? I mean, really, this offense played amazing last week. I would say one thing that, as a team, we need to improve on is not overlooking our opponent. Yeah. Me and Reese can speak for it. The mood around the Smith Station game, we thought it'd be super easy, and then the first drive, look what Smith Station did. They scored the touchdown and the two points. So, I would say this offense just needs to come out calm, not overlooking an opponent, which I don't think they will, because Baker is a very good team, but we need just to come out hot and fast and try to dominate the entire game. I said it last week, if we're winning the game, we need to continue to push on the gas and accelerate to get to the second round. Yeah, you know, last game, the first drive, uh, we allowed the big play um, to Smith Station's wide receiver, and then that led to a touchdown plus the two-point conversion. And like Taylor said, I just don't think the defense needs to come out there overlooking the opponent. And, you know, if you can do that and maybe hold Baker under 20, I think you'll be able to win because I know Baker, when they score a lot of points, they're able to win pretty big. Yeah, I actually remember when uh, Mr. Dillard, our head CTSO, texted our uh, staff group chat and he said, yeah, Smith Station is winning, and we were all, like, shocked. But, yeah, it was true. Then I checked the Auburn football Twitter right after he said that, and Auburn was down 8-0. So, I mean, that'll, that will, you know, that'll be okay against the Smith Station team who's just not found their footing this season. But against the Baker team who, like I said, like we said, 8-2 and two and really good on offense, I mean, you just can't allow that to happen because that lead will snowball with players like Josh Flowers and Bryce Kane. But now we move into our keys to the game. Now Auburn has different, ex- different, excuse me, different X factors that can help them take over a game. What do you all think those X factors are or will be in this game? I want to highlight the O-line. They played mm. stellar last week. They don't get enough love. You know, you think of the playmakers, such as the quarterbacks, the receivers, I mean, the running backs, the defensive backs, but the offensive line does not get enough love. We had six rushing touchdowns. I mean, that clearly shows that the O-line did their job, and they'll try to continue to get those pushes at the line. And also, our quarterbacks had plenty of time in the pocket to throw the ball. When we did throw the ball the very few times, it let us set our pace in the game, and we didn't look back the whole game. If we can do that, set our pace, make the play calls that we want to with this amazing O-line. I mean, this offense could be really dominant. Yeah, I think after uh, last game, you know, after the first drive, uh, we got some big fourth down stops. There was even a big hit. I didn't even get to see who it was because we were on the other side of the field on the Auburn side. It was on the Smith Station side. There was a big hit where um, one of our guys hit a Smith Station guy and forced the ball to go way up in the air. It was a fumble, but it went out of bounds. But, you know, if we just get some big red zone stops and, you know, try to get a lot of big stops against the Hornets, I think uh, you could see Auburn coming out on top tonight. Yeah, I honestly think those are keys for both of these teams. I mean, like you said, the offensive line for Auburn. I mean, if Omar is able to run like he did against Smith Station last week, I mean, Auburn's going to have a field day against this Baker defense, which what we've already said on the show, that's not their strong suit. Their strong suit is offense. And like you said, Reese, for their defense, I mean, Auburn's got to get some turnovers in this game. Yeah. they got to get some extra possessions and try and score because I I honestly think this might be a high-scoring game. I mean, you know, these are both really good offenses. I don't think they'd be crazy to I will to say high-scoring game, the conditions, you know, before yeah, the game. that is true. supposed to pour down in Mobile. So I think <coughs> you could definitely see, like, an old-school, hard-nosed football. And if that's the case, that favors Auburn. That favors yeah, Auburn by a lot more than eight. And that's I know the weather, the weather forecast shows a lot of the games for the Deep South here mm-hmm. for every most yeah. of the playoff games. It shows a lot of rain coming through during the day and then – like yeah. at nighttime, it clears out, and then everything's soaking wet, and it's just a yeah. big atmosphere for a lot of these teams. Yeah, a lot of potential for some old school football, a lot of potential for some upsets. And now we are going to move into tonight's player profiles, where we will each highlight one player on offense, defense, and a wild card player that I'll select from either side of the ball that will be crucial tonight for Auburn High. Who do y'all have as y'all's player profiles for tonight's matchup against the Baker Hornets? I got to go with one of the key members of the unit I was just highlighting. The absolute unit at the tackle position, number 67, Clem Womack. Mm. I'm pretty sure that's how you say his name. Yes, I know how to say his name. (laughs) Guys, if you see this, if you see him in the hall, he like towers over you. Yeah, he's huge. And he's built too. Like he's super muscular and he proves it on the O line. You know, you can have the build, but you may not have the talent. He's got the talent and he's been proving it in games, practices, and the weight room on our show, Blue Collar Mentality. You see him, you know, put in that work. I mean, he deserves to be a highlighted player on this offense. I'm sorry I haven't done him yet, 
But, you know, I got I to gotta just go around the whole offense, you know. But shout out to Clem. He's going to have a huge game against the Baker pass rush. For my player profile, I chose junior linebacker, number 44, Ty Hudson. He will be a crucial player tonight because I, I, he has 38 solo tackles, 21 assisted tackles, 59 total tackles, and he averages 9.8 tackles per game and has three tackles per loss. And uh, I think with him out there tonight, I think Auburn can get the dub against Baker. You know, our linebacker room is really good, especially Coach Ferguson working with yeah. them. And I, I just think Auburn, uh, Auburn's linebacker room is probably one of the best in the state. Oh, 100%. I agree with both of those picks there. I mean, we talked to Coach Stanford on our podcast, Play Callers. I mean, you know, he talked about, you know, his personal connection with Jalen Foster. But when he said uh, offensive linemen that really impressed him with how just savvy they were at the game, he talked about Clem Womack. He was like, he, the game just comes so natural to him. And then obviously he's got the build, puts the work in the weight room. And has really, you know, turned into a leader on this offense. And he's only a junior, so he'll be returning next year. And then, like you said, Ty Hudson, I mean, he's battled some injuries this year. But now he, lead, he still leads all – linebackers with 49 overall tackles now I know Wyatt Trexler is out for the season you know and that's a tough injury you know for especially like you said one of the best linebacker rooms but he'll come <laughs> in for him and he'll have a great game tonight I'm sure and then my player profile pick I'm gonna go with number nine Ashton White the senior defensive end uh, White was not a starter actually at the beginning of the year but he's worked his way up to a starting spot and has proven that it is very well deserved one of the fastest players in the trenches White is a problem for offensive tackles and the quarterback in the backfield. I mean, you know, you talk about this defensive line, this defense. I mean, all layers, you know, are covered very well by this Auburn Tigers team. I mean, you got, you know, up front, you got Ashton White and Caleb Pitts on the outside with Deuce White and Caleb Crawford, you know, on the inside. And so, I mean, this team is just great. And going into this game, I'm sure they'll get it done tonight. But now we're going to send you to a quick commercial break. But don't go away because next up is the Friday Night Lineup. Don't go away. I will be right by your side. Yes, women can have it all, including heart attacks. Know the signs. Heart disease is the number one killer of women. Get heart checked. Welcome back to HS Countdown. So far this season, we have had 10 different guest pickers come on to the show, all from the high def staff. And I'd say they fared pretty well when it comes to the picks. You know, from communications director Carson Hester becoming the first ever guest picker to go undefeated on the show, 7 0, to last week's guest picker, the head CTSO of High Def Club, Mr. Dillard, leveling up what he did, uh, going 8 0 on the picks, going undefeated. And that was a big feat. And now we'll see if this week's special guest picker can repeat that. It, and with all that being said, please help me in welcoming this week's special guest picker. He is currently the director of program development and sources tell me that his favorite food is B-dubs wings. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please help me give it up for Joel Shin. And now Joel, as the director of program development of High Def Club, what exactly does your job entail? So I train new and existing members of High Def. Uh, like I teach them how to use the control room like the TriCaster and the VMix. I also teach them how to use the cameras during the broadcast and just anything else they need help with. And with all that, and with all that being said, we move into our last segment, which is the Friday Night Lineup, where we will pick who we think is going to win tonight's biggest games across the state. Actually, it's the first round of the playoffs, so we're just going to be picking all the playoff games tonight. And we're going to go ahead and get started with Region 1 at Region 2, the number four seed coming out of Region 1, the Davidson Warriors. They're 5-5 five and five overall on the season, 3-3 three and three in Region 1 play. And they go on the road to face the number one in 7A, as well as the number one seed coming out of Region 2, the Central Red Devils. They're 9-0 on the season and finish at 8-0 in Region 2 play. Who do y'all got between the Warriors and the Red Devils? So Central is favored by 47 Jeez. in this game. In a playoff game? Shout out Crazy. to Davidson, but Central is just too dominant in this matchup and we'll move on to the second round. Shout out Cam Coleman. I remember interviewing you after the Auburn game and then really this entire Central offense on their amazing season. Go Red Devils. Yeah, um, I'm picking Central as well. Uh, I agree with Taylor. You know, Cam Coleman, good wide receiver. Five-star rating, 106 yards per game, and he's also ranked number eight in the nation. Also, shout out to quarterback Andrew Alford, 32 touchdown passes and two interceptions. You did his research. I know yeah, I did. I appreciate that. Um, I'm to I like, pick. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Great team. That. I'm hoping they win. On to you, Reese. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, yeah, I think Central wins this game uh, just like the spread. Spread does not lie. Um, I say Central wins pretty big, and um, I'm hoping to see Auburn face them next week. Yeah, I mean, th- I would be crazy to say that Davidson would beat Central, and so I'm not going to do it. I'm going to say Central wins this one at home. No-brainer, like you said, 47-point spread. And, I mean, if they beat Davidson and Auburn beats Baker, which we'll get into later, obviously, uh, that'll set up a big rematch for, you know, Auburn's last loss. Um, that'll be a huge matchup, and I think it'll happen because I think Central will beat Davidson. Give me Central at home. Now we're going to move into Region 4 at Region 3. We got the number four seed coming out of Region 4, the Florence Falcons. They're 6-4 and four overall in the season and 5-2 and two in Region 4 play. They're going on the road to face number one seed out of Region 3 and number two ranked team in 7A, the Thompson Warriors. They're 8-1 and one overall, and they finish at 7-0 and oh coming out of Region 3. Who do y'all got between the Falcons and the Warriors? So this is another 4v1 matchup, but Thompson only favored by 24 in this game. I mean, still a really big line, but Florence has really bounced back after their rough start to their season and beaten good teams such as Austin, Sparkman, and Huntsville. But again, Thompson, way too much power on the offensive side, led by none other than the wonder ninth grader Trent Seaborn. Go Warriors. Yeah, I picked the Thompson as well. I agree with Taylor. Trent Seaborn, ninth grader. Seaborn, I'm sorry. Ninth grade. Ranked number one in the class of 2027, 34 touchdown passes and only seven interceptions. I mean, hey, stay favored by, what, 24? 24. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking Thompson's going to win. Yeah, I don't see Thompson going down at home, uh, especially their first playoff game. I see them getting pretty far in the playoffs, actually. Um, And I see Trent Seaborn having a good game on Friday night. Yeah, I got to agree with the rest of the board here once again. I'm going to say Thompson gets this win at home over Florence. Um, and it sets up a huge matchup between them and possibly Hewitt Trustville or Bob Jones, which we'll pick that, you know, in a little bit. But, yeah, I think Thompson at home, like you said, Trent Seaborn, I mean, we all know the name. Uh, eighth grader won state championship last year, the first to ever do it. I think they'll continue uh, their strong season, as well as Jared Smith, uh, who I shouted out uh, last week whenever they took on Hoover. Um, you know, he's the transfer from Spain Park a couple of weeks ago, and I think he'll have a huge game as well. So give me the Warriors at home. Now we're going to move into another Region 1 at Region 2 matchup. This time it's the three seed out of Region 1, the Daphne Trojans, who are 6-4 and four overall in the season and finish at 4-2 and two in Region 1 play. They're going on the road to face the number two seed coming out of Region 2 and the number seven team over number seven ranked team overall in 7A, uh, the Enterprise Wildcats. They're eight and two overall and finished at six and two in region two play on the season. Who do y'all got between the Trojans and the Wildcats? So Enterprise is favored by 18 in this game, but I'll say it again, I say it every single week. The Enterprise offense does not impress me at all. They're very run heavy and very slow moving. And to be honest, in the Alabama State playoffs, that just won't get you any wins really. And Daphne, too much power in this game, and they'll get a huge upset on the road in Enterprise. Go Trojans. I'm going to have to disagree with Taylor this time. Uh, I'm going for Enterprise. They've got linebacker Eric Winters. He's a four-star. I mean, I don't know. I've seen the Enterprise play games with Auburn before. It's been a tough game. I feel like Enterprise is going to beat Daphne this time. Yeah, no, I, Daphne's a good team, but I just see Enterprise winning here um, at home. You know, Daphne, I think, will play close for a little bit, but Enterprise will probably be able to pull one out uh, at home against against Daphne. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to have to agree with Taylor here, actually. I'm going to say Daphne gets this win on the road, and (laughs) he he put it out perfectly. I mean, uh, before that, going into that Auburn game early in the season, we harped on, you know, Enterprise's really good offense through those first two games, but then they came in and faced a good Auburn team, and they only put up 17 points. I mean, so, and since then, I mean, you know, obviously they've had some, you know, injuries throughout the season, but their offense just really hasn't found their footing after that win over Auburn. So I'm going to go with Daphne to get this upset win on the road. And now we're going to move to Region 4 at Region 3. The number three seed coming out of Region 4, the Bob Jones Patriots, who are 5-5 five and five and 5-2 five and two overall in Region 4. They're going on the road to face the number two Hewitt Trustville Huskies, who are, or the number two seed coming out of Region 3. They're also the number nine ranked team in 7A right now. They're 7-3 overall and 5-2 and two in Region 3 play. Who do y'all got between the Patriots and the Huskies? So Bob Jones actually let me down last week against Hartsell. I picked Bob Jones. A bunch of other people picked Hartsell around me. And with Hewitt being favored by 15, it's hard to disagree with that line. This Hewitt offense, such a threat to the entire state, and it's led by none other than Peyton Floyd. Too many weapons on every side of the ball for the Huskies. Give me the Huskies covering the spread. But shout out to Bob Jones for making a playoff push. 
Yeah, I played Kiwa Trust well as well. Uh, they've got the great Payne Floyd, the quarterback. He's rushed for two, 723 yards and 40, 56 touchdown passes. Uh, I picked, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with both of y'all. I'm gonna go with Hewitt here. Uh, Hewitt just really hasn't disappointed all season, and I think they're gonna keep it rolling um, in the playoffs here and uh, advance to the second round of the playoffs. Yeah, I 100% agree with all of y'all on this pick. Huskies win it at home. Bob Jones going into that uh, game against Hartsell last week. I mean, they were on a three-game win streak, you know, and not a lot of people at the start of the season. They started off, what, like one and four on the season, and then they went on to win actually four straight. Um, you know, not a lot of people expected them to be at this point, so shout-out to the Patriots, but they're not going to get the win on the road. I mean, this Huskies team is really good. Tough losses, you know, against Central and Thompson, but I think Hewitt Trustville starts off their playoffs uh, with a good start against the Patriots, and then they get ready for on the road against the Warriors next week. And now we're going to move to Region 3 at Region 4, and it's going to be between number four seed out of Region 3. A bit of a shocker after the way they started their season. The Hoover Buccaneers, who are 4-6 and six overall, but they're 4-3 and three in Region 3 play. And then they're going on the road to the number one seed out of Region 4, the James Clemens Jets who are 7-3 overall and finished at 6-1 and one in their region, in Region 4. Who do y'all got between the Buccaneers and the Jets? So Hoover is actually favored yeah. by 7 in this game. Crazy. And I told y'all, I believed in this Hoover team, <laughs> and it paid off. Go Buccaneers, oh, Noah wow. Schubach oh. career game, yeah, no. and this Hoover team puts up 60 on James Clemens. I, I, I told y'all the Bucs were going to come back and make the playoffs. Y'all didn't believe me. This James Clemens team has looked great. I just don't believe in their offense at all. Go Buccaneers, beat James Clemens. I completely disagree. I'm going for James <laughs> Clemens. They got running back Cameron Barry. He's only a junior. He's only rushed, not only, he's rushed <laughs> 657 <laughs> yards. All right, I'm telling you, man. All right, James Clemens, aren't they number one? Coming out of the region, yes. Yeah. Coming out in, the, of the, in the worst region yeah. in Alabama? <laughs> I don't care, man. If you're number one, you're going to be number one in that game. I'm going for James Clemens. They're going to beat Even the though they're favored to lose? Even though they're favored to lose. <laughs> well, I don't know football, but let me just say, <laughs> I'm going to guess James Clemens. They're going to win. Uh, I'm going with James Clemens. I'm going with Joel here. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with James Clemens to beat Hoover. What is that, buddy? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, uh, Hoover barely got in the playoffs, so yeah. J E T J E T S Jets 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 Jets. <laughs> um, so uh, you, Reese, you were asking what Taylor just did there. He actually whispered for me to pick Hoover, but before he did that, I was still gonna pick Hoover. I still think they're gonna Let's win. Let's go! I think they're gonna win this game. They're on a winning streak. I mean, they've got big wins over Spain Park. Who? I mean, they finished Spain Park finished seven and three, and that was back when they had Jared Smith. That was a huge win for the Hoover Buccaneers. I said early on in the season when they were one and four, I said they need to prove it to me before I can pick them again. They proved it. In the they did prove it, weeks. and now they're in the playoffs. They won three straight. They're coming into the playoffs. Oh, and the Panthers are gonna be the oh, Cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I got the Bucks on the road. You said J E T S Jets, Jets, Jets. I mean, the Jets just lost. So I think you might have put a curse on them as well. So I'm gonna go with the Buccaneers to win on the road. And now. We're moving into our second to last matchup, and it's between uh, the number four seed out of Region 2 as well as the number five team in 7A right now, the Dothan Wolves. They're 8-2 and two overall and 6-2 and two in Region 2 play. They're going on the road to face the number one seed coming out of Region 1, the Mary Montgomery Vikings, who are 10-0 and 0 on the season. Not a lot of people expected this at the beginning of the season. They're also 6-0 and 0 in their region. Who do y'all got between the Wolves and the Vikings? I mean, what a great matchup. Mary Montgomery only favored by four. But I was actually talking to our CTSO, Mr. Dillard, about the weather conditions and everything in mm -hmm. South and the Southern Alabama. And I mean, it's gonna rain yeah. a lot. It's gonna rain all throughout the day. During the game, it's not supposed to rain. But I was talking to him that this Dothan offense is gonna dominate a team that has never seen their offense. Mm -hmm. I mean, it worked against Auburn until the very last second in double yeah. overtime. And I think it'll work against Mary Montgomery. Get, give me the Wolves getting a huge upset and moving on to the second round. I just don't believe in this Mary Montgomery team. They haven't beaten good enough teams for me to, you know, believe in them to beat Dothan. Uh, I picked Dothan as well. They got running back to Marion Peterson. He's a senior. He's got 18 touchdowns, 1,082 <laughs> yards. Hey, if I have money, I would put, put it down on Dothan. <laughs> good one, Joe. Good one. Uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna have to agree with both of y'all. Um, like Taylor said, Mary Montgomery has not played anybody on their schedule that's really irrelevant. And I think... I think Dothan wins um, pretty big here at Mary Montgomery. 
So yeah, so like I said before, I mean, nobody expected this Mary Montgomery team to be 10-0 and coming into the playoffs, although you're right. I mean, they did play a pretty easy schedule. They're also playing in Region 1. Region 1 usually doesn't have, you know, the strongest amount of teams. But, I mean, this Mary Montgomery team, I mean, you know, they're on a roll, obviously, and their quarterback, I forget his name, but he's committed to South Alabama. Um, and, you know, I'm going to go with Mary Montgomery, actually, to win this game. he's a South Alabama fan. <laughs> I am, actually. Oh, I go into he's a Georgia Tech fan. <laughs> I'm going to go with the Mary Montgomery Vikings to get a huge, get their biggest win in their program history uh, at home against the Wolves here. It's going to be a close game. It's going to be a great one. But like you said, crazy weather conditions. You never know what's going to happen. I'm going to go with the Vikings to move to 11-0 and on the season and move to the second round of the playoffs. And now we're going to move, now we're going to, move to uh, Region 3 at Region 4, the number three seed coming out of Region 3, the Vestavia Hills Rebels. Also the number six team in 7A right now. There are eight two overall and five and two uh, in region three play they're going on the road to face the number two seed out of region four the austin black bears they're also the number 10 seed and or the number 10 ranked team in 7a right now they're eight and two overall and five and two in region four play who do y'all got between the rebels and the black bears so this game has an even line Jeez. i mean this is almost uncalled for in high school football we don't see it a lot great matchup i mean talk about different play styles though i mean this bestavia team Physical, hard-nosed football, killer run game, plenty of design quarterback runs, quarterback powers, quarterback draws. You see it a bunch. And this Austin team loves to score in bunches and throw the ball downfield. They love to get it deep. I mean, this is such a coin flip for me. But like I said at the beginning of the year, Vestavia is my dark horse to make it to state. And that still reigns true. You know, after that hot start, losing to Thompson, kind of depleted their confidence a little bit. But they're back. They're in the playoffs. And the Rebels move on. Yeah, I agree. Um, I picked Best David Hills as well. Um, they've got Jordan Roth, who's a defensive end. He's a five-star, actually, and he's ranked number 10 nationally. So. Possibly. Please commit to Auburn. Please yeah, I think he will. I don't know. So, yeah, I'm picking Best David Hills. I'm going, with, uh, I'm going with both of y'all again. I'm going to Vestavia here. I just see Vestavia, honestly, like Taylor said, I see Vestavia possibly making it into state. I think they'll make it pretty far in the playoffs, but they could make that extra step to state. We'll see um, the rest of the way, but I get Vestavia here. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you all this time. I'm going to say the Rebels are going to win on the road against the Black Bears. Although this Austin team, I mean, they've got momentum coming into this game. And, you know, uh, having having the home turf, you know, is a big advantage. But I believe the Vestavia <laughs> team is a way better team, way more battle-tested. I mean, coming out of Region 3, honestly, Region 3 and Region 2 are, like, really battling for the best region in 7A. Yeah. They're both really good. And so I feel like Vestavia, you know, they've proven it. they won eight games, and the two games they've lost have been against a really good Hewitt team and a really good Thompson team. So give me the Rebels on the road to beat the Black Bears. And now we move into the matchup of the night. The Region 2, the number three seed coming out of Region 2, also the number four ranked team in 7A, uh, the Auburn Tigers, who are 8 and 2 overall and 6 and 2 in Region 2 play. They go on the road to face the number two seed coming out of Region 1, the Baker Hornets, who are 8 and 2 as well and also 5 and 1 coming out of their region. Who do y'all got between the Tigers and the Hornets tonight? I mean, it's hard to believe that we've gotten to this point, made it this far in the season. The first round of the playoffs is upon us. I just want to say I'm blessed to be on the show with y'all. But we're going to keep making more episodes because this Auburn team has been ruled out all season with the loss to Enterprise at home, the quarterback situation and everything going on around the team. This Auburn team will rally once more and travel three and a half hours down the road and beat yeah. the living snot out of the Baker oh, Hornets. Oh. Go <laughs> Tigers. All right. Shout out to all the coaches and players that have made it possible for all of us yeah. to be part of something special that they have going on. And it'll continue tonight and it'll continue next week. Uh, go I got, Tigers. I got Auburn in this matchup. Uh, Baker, Baker's actually a pretty good team, but I got Auburn winning this one on the road. And uh, I can't wait for us to face Central next week, uh, rematch, possibly uh, yeah. hoping for an upset, but we'll see. Yeah, I mean, this game, you know, I've talked to some of the players throughout this week, and I mean, like, they're ready, they're pumped up for this game, going on the road. I mean, this is, it is true, this is a better Baker team than we're used to seeing, although Auburn in the two times they played them, they beat them 39-3 both times, and it's been in the first round of the playoffs. I think the same thing happens here. I'm going for 39 to 3 3 Pete. I'm going with Auburn beating the Baker Hornets. Uh, like I said, 39 to 3 on the road is my score prediction. I mean, they have Josh Flowers, they have Bryce Kane, but everybody else on their team, I don't know their names. 
Um, you know, this Auburn team is really good. Uh, coming in with Jackson Kilgore, Henry Allen, the duo at quarterback, and then Omar Mattson, Tyler Flakes, uh, Tremarcus Webb. I mean, the list goes on and on for how many studs this team has. And so I'm going to go with the Tigers winning on the road against Baker. And Joel, who's your pick? Auburn! The only right pick. The only right pick. Would you tell us uh, why that is? Oh, yes. Oh, oh. Oh, because I go to Auburn <laughs> High School. Yeah. Yeah, nice. <laughs> All right, and that'll do it for AHS Countdown from myself as well as the rest of the crew here at AHS Countdown, as well as a special thanks to our very our, our, our guest picker, uh, Joel Shin. We hope you enjoyed tonight's game, and we hope to see you back here Friday, December 1st for Auburn basketball's rematch versus Carver Montgomery. <laughs>